another one. How did you find your first QA automation role? I have worked two years as a manual QA tester, decided to switch to automation, completed a Java, Selenium, Appium, etc. course, and now I'm trying to find a first automation job. And it's very hard. I have seen literally zero trainee internship positions available. Almost every job advertisement for junior to middle requires two plus years of strict automation experience on LinkedIn and other local job websites. Of course, I am familiar with Haha, ha, they want you to be experienced to provide you some experience dilemma in IT. But honestly, it seems really extreme, particularly for this position. Has anyone else experienced this? How did you get through this? Any advice? <sighs> they are trying to take all of my secrets from me tonight. Let's put the time up. So there is all right. The problem is you're trying to leave one company as a manual QA tester and go to another company as an automation tester when it sounds like you do not have any actual experience or working experience working as an automation tester. The way that I got into automation is I was a QA analyst. I started off as a QA analyst, right? Making a very low amount of money. But through the way that I worked, the way that I troubleshooted, all of that stuff, right? Um, the way that I documented, the way that I, the way that I reported bugs, the way that I worked with the, the web engineers to resolve those bugs, how I would, how I would negotiate with them and, you know, just have a good relationship with the people that I was working with to try to get things done in a more efficient way, done better. I was asked, I didn't go looking for it. I was asked like, hey, uh, we need to, we need another. And at the time I knew absolutely nothing about automated testing, right? And I was asked, hey, would you be interested in learning about automated testing? Because we, we need to fill this position. We need to bring a second person on. We already have somebody who, who, um, who's been doing it. And we need to bring a second person on, right? So especially because that person was going on vacation for a month, a month, and I was going to have to fill in. And once they were gone for that month, that's when everything started to crash and burn and I had to figure it out, right? So with that being said, the best way to transition into, into automation I'm going to regret myself for sharing this information, but the best way to transition is to do it in your current role at your current company. Even if, you're, even if your company has automated testers, there is absolutely, and this is the problem that I had with a lot of QA, um, a lot of the QA testers and analysts that I worked with um, a few jobs ago, right? When I, was, when I was doing automation, right? Oh, we want to work with you, want to be on your team, da, 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 right? Blah, 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 right? And I'm like, okay, well, what are you doing? Nothing. Well, how do you expect to work with me if you're not doing anything? Oh, because uh, we don't have the software on my computer. I'm like, you just, you just download the software and you start automating. Oh, but five o'clock comes and it's like beep, beep, and they're out, right? No, why aren't you, why aren't you learning? Like, why do you have to come to my team and take up the time and resources of my team for you to learn where you want to be. I'll be glad to, to answer a question for you, right? But you're not going to come work on my team so you can learn. No, 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 no. It does not work that way. See, now you're out there and you're like, I hate it here. I want to go home. But you didn't do the work that you needed to do to get to where you wanted to be. To me, I don't give anybody anything. See, I can see things in people from my first interaction with them. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I want to work with that person. 
the way that this person um, spoke to me, the way that they approached me, I can see that they have a, they have a, that burning desire in their eye, right? They show me from way before that I even met them that they've, they're doing the work. They're putting in effort. But then you have some other people who they're like, um, they're like, just, you know, teach me. I'm like, well, what did you do? Nothing. What was stopping you from installing the software on your, it's just an IDE. Installing it on your computer, installing it at home. Bring your laptop in and say, oh, I was trying this and it didn't work. And when I see that, I'm like, oh, okay, you're serious. All right, now come sit next to me. I'll, I'll stay at work at, at an hour extra so I can make sure that you get everything set up right and you, you're good to go, right? Oh, let's meet up on a Saturday. Show me what you're working on, and then I can I can help you refine it and all that type of stuff, right? But no, you expected me to just um, give it to you. I don't give anything away for free, all right? It might not cost you monetarily, but it's going to cost you an effort, all right? So, the best way to do it, do it for the company that you work for. Even if it's, even if it's on your own time, that is experience that you're getting. And let me ask you a question, right? So, let's say you work as a manual QA tester at, at a company, right? Your official title is manual QA tester, right? It's manual QA. But you write automation tests. Like, let's say just, just for your own sake, just so you can make your testing better, right? You write automation tests. Like, you, you took Selenium courses. You took whatever courses that you took, right? You took Java. You took Python. Maybe you did Cypress or Playwright. Whatever the case may be, right? You took the courses. So now you write automation tests, and you write them cleanly. You write them neatly. Let's say you, let's say you, you, you follow the Tech Coach Ralph channel, and... You, you, say, you say, you know what, Tech Coach Ralph, can you submit me, can you create, do a, a code review for me, right? Do a pull request. And I'm like, oh, sure. And I, and I break down your code. I'm like, okay, this, this can be done this way. This is good. This can be done better. Blah, 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 right? And now you, you make those adjustments and everything like that, and you, you apply it to your code. And now you have super clean code. You, you're, you're being more efficient and everything like that, right? So now you can put on, it's a, so now you put on your resume, um, manual slash automated tester at company ABC. So now, and you list, you list what you did on your resume, right? Although your title wasn't QA engineer at that company, but does that mean you can't put some type of QA engineer for that company? Because are you going to put, here's a question for you guys who, when you're doing resumes. Do you, do you put the, um, the title that you had at the company or did you, do you put the, the actual title of the job that you do? Right, so just because you like you're listed as a manual tester, right? But if you do automated testing and everything, you have a nice, robust suite and everything like that, right? Are you gonna put manual tester? Or are you gonna put um? Are you gonna put um? QA engineer or automated tester, whatever, whatever title you come up with, right? Which one are you gonna put? And that's what I call doing the work to be where you want to be. Right. So that's that question. Um. I, th I think that we, we strategize incorrectly um, and we put ourselves behind the eight ball by not properly maneuvering. All right? So if you left, your, if you left your, your current company and now you're stuck trying to find another job, then that's going to be tough. It, it's hard out there, especially for entry level. Right? Especially for entry level, it is tough right now. Because especially like with, with the rise of all these boot camps and stuff like that, because before people would go to college and then they would they would study some type of um, they would get into QA somehow, right? There was there's not QA offered in college per se, but they would they would they would start they would go to college and somehow they would end up in QA, right? But now with the rise of these boot camps that are that are promising you like 90k to do manual testing, that simply doesn't exist. Like I'm gonna break it to you, I'm gonna break it to you the hard way. That doesn't exist. A lot of money doing manual testing it does not exist. Unless you're doing some type of manual testing in some crazy domain, right? 
But then even at his entry level, like for you to get that position in entry, like for you to get that position in this crazy domain, this niche domain, they would have hired you like at an at an early at a like a long time ago, and you would have been in that company for a long time, right? And that's how you would have gotten up to a lot of money. You know? But hopefully you didn't leave your 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 current job. I would say stay there and start doing automated testing. Start that and that way you have something to put on your resume, you have something to show, you have code, you have projects, all that good stuff. All right. So that is how we see that question. the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.